Good evening. How are you? I'm doing a stand and talk because I spent the day in court and by the time I got back, I'd lost the light of day. So uh, what do I have to say that's, that's worth a few minutes of your time? I think uh, most of us are reeling from the appointments to the cabinet that are being made by President-elect Trump. And I think there are a couple of things that we should consider when we look at this. We know that there's an aspect of Donnie the Clown that dominates whatever Trump does. But there's often a method to his madness that's not immediately obvious. Plainly, the nominations he's making are destructive of our entire government. He seeks to ridicule the government by proposing people who are entirely antithetical to what these various cabinet positions in the executive department mean. So let me give you an example. Plainly, if you have Getz proposed to be the attorney general, you are not saying that I know Getz who only practiced for two years in a small firm and probably never handled, handled a parking ticket is not the kind of material that we expect of an attorney general. We've already had two with high question marks, Barr being one who is always making deals with Trump in his first term, if you will. And then we had Garland who uh, slept on the absence of laurels, doing nothing that might have avoided the democratic tragedy that Trump is the president-elect. We have learned that in the campaign, uh, Trump went around uh, and had a very powerful disinformation campaign, putting people against each other and undermining their willingness to vote for Democrats. Okay, but let's return to the cabinet. What is going on? Well, you see, when you have a revolution, what you want to do is to first create the chaos of an absence of government. So part of this is an absence of government. But, you know, to choose uh, and talk about Gates, Gates for a few moments. Gates has multiple purposes because he opens up the Justice Department that whomever may be appointed, if in fact the Senate has the gumption to stop his nomination to become the Attorney General, then what you have is an opportunity to protect the president elect once in office from the prosecutions that are still pending against him even though there's a rush at the so-called Just Us Department to uh, speed that up. So that, that's one suggestion. We've, we've had uh, crazy and false claims about science and medicine in the nation. So, of course, RFK Jr., who's a vaccinating nut, and I don't know that he could be approved in a fair situation. So here we have a first level. We create a disrespect for the government. We put people in place who don't know anything about the function and have no intention of serving the function and indeed want to destroy the function. We've heard, you know, in the past about the Department of Education. Oh, we're going to eliminate it. And in fact, the objective of Trump under the tutelage of Steve Bannon I think is to try to create an atmosphere in which they believe we don't need government, to destroy government, to create the kind of chaos that would put him in a position to be the dominant force in America. Now, the best example of this is how he's asked that these nominees to the cabinet be approved or not by the Senate. And as you know, there's a constitutional provision that provides that a nominee by the president to a position is approved or not with the advice and consent of the United States Senate. Now, years ago, I was involved in an investigation of the confirmation hearings of Labor Secretary Raymond, I don't know any mobsters, Donovan, to become the Labor Secretary. And what happened was the FBI withheld information from the Labor Committee, U.S. Uh, Senate, that would have enabled them to make decisions, to inform their discretion to make a decision whether or not he was worthy to be the labor secretary. Okay, so here we are, fast forward, years later, and the president-elect 
is asking the Senate not to go through this advice and consent stuff, just, you know, take a holiday. They call them recess appointments. Take a recess appointment, take a recess, and then during that time, I'll appoint all of these people, and then under a provision in the Constitution, I can have these people there for two years without having to go through any confirmation hearings. Now, you may have read that they're not submitting people for FBI background checks either. So they want a blank check to approve people in the most critical elements of our government in the cabinet without the Senate, even though it's going to be controlled by Republicans, without the Senate advising and consent on these nominations. And Thune, a senator uh, who has been approved to be the leader for the Republicans in the U.S. Senate, and said, well, that's not off the table, meaning he might agree to that. And so are they going to do it for some and not for others? And are they therefore going to negotiate away the power, which is something that it's very hard to ever get government people to give up? So let me synthesize. Donnie the Clown actually has a method to his madness. It is, on the one hand, to discredit our government by appointing people that if they should be approved, would do everything they could to compromise or destroy the function of that cabinet office. In addition, we are not allowing, we, that is Trump, in his transition, is not allowing for FBI background checks. In addition, they're asking the senators to give up their power to advise and consent to the president. So is this alarming? Yes, it is, because you see, process is outcome determinative, meaning if I set up a process in a certain way, I can get a predictable result. So if I set up a process in which there's no background investigation and the Senate rubber stamps what I ask for in terms of my cabinet officers, yes, it happens quickly. But in addition, what happens is the Senate has diminished its ability to be a check on the executive and we talk about, and you've heard about it, but this is how it would work. The checks and balances between the executive department where the president is and his cabinet and the Congress is that, yes, the president gets to nominate people, but the Senate is a check on whether or not that person is worthy of the office, capable of the office, is right for the office, right for the republic and is the kind of person that they could go to the people they represent in our democracy and say to them, yes, this is a good person. So when you create that atmosphere, you take us closer to the kind of dictatorship that Trump is arguing for. You know, he says as a, quote, joke, Donnie the Clown, that, yo, hey, <clears throat> maybe I can get another term of office, you know, which is, echoing what's happened among other dictators on this planet at different times. <clears throat> so he seeks to mimic the strongmen that he would replace with himself for America. This is, a, this is something of concern. Now, in addition, another simple thing is uh, we see people uh, in social media wondering what to do. So there has been created a kind of post-traumatic stress disorder from the cognitive dissociation between how we believe government has worked and should work and how it is working by Donnie the Clown. Now, you can't laugh at this clown. I don't know if you ever saw the movie V, which is basically about, um, if you will, uh, a government out of control and an effort to take it over by the people. But Along the way, they have a comedian who has a show make fun of the government, and everybody thinks it's funny. And then one evening, not on the TV, they come to his house and they drag him out after hiding under the bed. That's where this can go. It can go all these ways. And, you know, in, an, in a nation that is familiar with uh, complexity math or chaos math, knows that small iterations can have enormous positive or negative effect as those iterations play out. And these are not small, small increments. These are large increments. We have a government that 
is at least in part the subject of an election that involved massive amounts of disinformation. We don't know what, but in the weeks ahead, we'll find out. And what, uh, what Trump is trying to do is to speed us to that point where he has that control so the questions won't matter. You know, some people say, wow, it's okay if the Justice Department just throws out all those the rest of those prosecutions of Trump. You know, what's the big deal anyhow? And it's okay if um, the not-so-special uh, assistant, uh, special counsel Smith, and eh, he quits. And it's not so bad if they dismiss the You know, it just goes on and on. Cowardice. And no nodding uh, acknowledgement that what's at stake is our republic. So that's up to us. We, the people, continue to be the guiding force for those in government to do the right thing. And there are a hundred pressure points that still exist that have not been destroyed by this monarchy of borning. And all these people that he gathers around him and he uses like pieces on a chessboard, that's all they are. They're all instruments of his grander plan. And if you want to talk about conspiracy, that's the kind of conspiracy he has in mind. Does it out in the open? Doesn't always explain how it's going to work, but he does it anyhow. So what are we to do? We should pay attention. Uh, and for those who uh, find distressing the news we have every day and the super analysis, only in the sense of it being excessive and repetitive and it being on 24-7, you keep in mind that you have to take care of yourself in order to be what you are in your family, in your business, in your community, and to guard against this pernicious plan that Donnie the Clown has to one day stand up there as our leader, and he's there to help us. So the objective of... Donnie the Clown and all of his corrupt minions is to suspend everything that is of order, that is legal, that is constitutional as we understand it, and eradicate it in whatever ways he can and compromise the powers of those who could compete with his power to himself become a dictator. Is that alarmist? Uh, I suppose it is alarmist, but not enough people are saying it. I did hear somebody today say, um, and I wish I could remember his name because I agreed with it 100%, but I was focusing on my uh, imminent, then imminent court appearance. But what he was saying is, Trump has been saying all along, the government should be taken down, taken apart. And um, you've heard my comments about that in the past. So I thought I'd make this comment, even though I couldn't get to it during the day, and I expect uh, I'll be out walking and talking tomorrow. And uh, I hope, as some of you indicate, this gives some uh, cause for pause, for comfort, uh, by the fact that we analyze it and know what's going on. Uh, and then what needs to be done, uh, I think we will see leaders come forward. Will they be forceful or cowardly? Recent history has not favored uh, much courage uh, among those who are in a position to make a difference. So I guess it continues to be up to me, up to you, up to everybody else. So uh, that's what I have to say for this evening. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow and uh, from the happy trails. All the best. Bye-bye.